Good morning. My name is John Palfrey, and I teach at the law school, and it's a huge pleasure and an honor to be here uh, kicking off the second session of the Harvard Initiative for Learning and Teaching Symposium. This is already a triumph. Congratulations to Aaron and the Housers and others. I think the mere fact of that first conversation happening across disciplines and across schools with such energy indicates the promise of this initiative, um, and I look forward very much to the coming session on innovation. I wanted to start out briefly where Mazarin Banaji started also, which was in the zone of busting myths. I think one of the myths that persists sometimes about Harvard and teaching is one that many of us who teach here find annoying. Um, that myth is that undergraduates would get a better education if they went elsewhere to a smaller school where they might have greater contact with professors and all we do is lecture and have teaching fellows teach our students. I think this is a persistent and annoying myth in many respects because it's not true. And I think part of the purpose of today's session is to understand many of the ways in which that's not true. But if I'm honest with myself, I think back to my experience as a Harvard undergraduate in the early 1990s, most of the learning that I did was in large lecture rooms like this one, sometimes in a smaller setting like a seminar. Um, the best of it actually in one-on-one -on -one settings in the history and literature concentration with amazing teachers. Um, and so I think it is important for us to acknowledge that we have a trajectory here that we're on where there's much innovation going on, but it's not always innovative. And one thing we have to figure out is how to take the learning that we've heard and to scale it in many respects and to learn from one another about best practices. And in some respects, that's the question that we take up here with this innovation panel. Um, there are, I think, at least two wrinkles to the uh, reason why that's a myth and one that's worth busting. One is that there are many wonderful, innovative modes of teaching going on at Harvard. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with David Malin's CS50 class. This is a much celebrated class. If you haven't heard about it, um, spend some time learning about it this afternoon in the breakouts. That's just one of many, many examples. Um, we hear from many professors in uh, the college, but also across the university doing amazing things. Um, the creativity that we see in CS50 is also, though, matched in some respects by the creativity of our students. As a parenthetical, you may have seen uh, reference to this in the Harvard Crimson, something which was noted the ode to Malin, that students trying to get into this oversubscribed class have been making videos about super Malin and other things to try to convince uh, Mr. Malin to let them in. Um, my colleague, Jonathan Zittrin, who also teaches an oversubscribed class, uh, has got students blogging to him in public, asking to be let in. So the creativity is being rewarded by creativity uh, on the student part as well. But the creativity in teaching and learning is also, or learning and teaching, Aaron, excuse me for getting the um, order wrong, uh, is also happening in many parts of the university outside the college as well. Um, we have the uh, extraordinary uh, good fortune of having strength across so many different schools and uh, including the professional schools and I couldn't help but uh, take a few moments to mention things going on at the Harvard Law School, uh, my disciplinary home anyway. Um, I should say that much of the teaching that has been rewarding for me has also been across disciplinary boundaries, teaching in the um, FAS this semester with Robert Darton, a class on censorship where I look at the kinds of censorship happening on the internet and this great historian of the book is looking at it um, from an historical perspective. Um, so much is happening across the disciplines, but much is happening that is innovative in disciplines and in schools like the professional schools. We'll hear from Clayton Christensen in a moment um, uh, about many things, and I suspect including his own teaching in the business school. Um, but at the law school, uh, President Faust mentioned the history of the case method being invented by Christopher Columbus Langdell in the late 19th century. And what's so exciting about what's going on at the law school now is the reinvention of that same case method that we unleashed on the world. There are many wonderful things about the case method as it's taught in the classic Socratic way. Uh, I was reminded in the earlier panel of my own experience as a student at Harvard Law School not so long ago and which classes I got the most from in the classic Socratic way. Well, there were two. One was taught by Professor Minow, who is a very imposing, even though not physically so, Socratic teacher, and for whom I studied civil procedure with great precision in anticipation of her hard questions. The other was Elizabeth Warren, now candidate for the United States Senate. Um, why? Because she called on everyone every day, pretty much, and I therefore learned it with great uh, kind of rigor as I was preparing to be quizzed. This was the testing concept. But I think, uh, as you'll hear if you listen to Professor Guineer, Lonnie Guineer later, um, that the idea that there's only one way to teach the law 
um, is something that um, we know isn't true, and there are many ways to do it. The exciting things that are happening are happening in many respects outside of the Socratic method. I see uh, Robert Bourdon, who teaches in the negotiation program, one of the truly great teachers um, here at Harvard. Um, I see sitting next to him Wendy Jacobs, who teaches with me in a class on the problem-solving workshop. We now submit all students in the Harvard law school's first year to a class on problem solving for lawyers, which takes the case method and turns it on its head. We actually adopt many of the principles from the business school and the education school and the Kennedy School in presenting problems to real, uh, real problems that lawyers would face and have them uh, adopt it the other way. This is the brainchild of uh, Joe uh, Singer and Todd Rakoff who are here. There are many exciting things happening across the disciplines and I think that's part of the exploration that we have through the HILT program and through today is to see where those innovative programs are happening and bring them together in ways that we can learn from one another. Um, so to the Housers in particular, this is a triumph of a day in part because you are forcing us to ask and answer these questions across the disciplines and to come together to do it. And this is already a major success, and thank you for that.